Warning, the views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of the HHN TV or its constituent entities. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody, I'm Drew Duncan. The show is Underground Sports and we are live. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan Radio. I am wherever you are listening to podcasts. Take your device to play Underground Sports by Drew Duncan. You can just Google Underground Sports by Drew Duncan. I'm going to pop right up, bro Ham. Plenty to get to today. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Bills and Dolphins from last night. Bama, Wisconsin, Boston College, Mizzou, Tampa Bay. Detroit, Broncos, Steelers. But in the meantime, it is Friday. That means our MMA insider, Austin Ford, is kicking it with us live. My man, how you living today, baby? Man, one day away from the UFC sphere, the most anticipated event of all time. So Dana sold it. I'm buying it. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching tonight or uh, tomorrow night. So, days starting to blend together. (laughs) (laughs) So, real quick here, which obviously we'll we'll be getting to O'Malley and Mirab momentarily, but first of all, you and I were talking about it last night. Uh, Boy, that was a hell of a headshot. To uh, look, he's had quite a few injuries. You know, they were talking about some of the concussions that he's had. Uh, at this point, if you're Tua, do you think maybe it's time to let it go and hang it up? I don't think so. I mean, that was his fault yeah. last night. You know, he should have slid. Uh, he could have even protected himself falling forward a little better but his position isn't one of uh it's it's probably the lowest risk of a contact to the head i mean you know it's a penalty if you just slap him in the head so i think he just needs to get healthy and definitely be very disciplined to protect his head. He was careless last night, and I think he'd be okay. But if he was a running back or a lineman, linebacker, I I would be saying absolutely your brain is too sensitive to be hitting somebody in the hip. I mean, he didn't even get hit hard, and uh, he got stiffened up like – as if he got knocked out. So scary. We know that that's, you know, that's the computer of the, of the body. You only get one of those and it doesn't heal from you know, brain trauma. So, you know, I worry about him, but I don't think his career is over, especially when you got 200 million on the line. <laughs> no, uh, that's, that's, that's not even enough money to not be able to function, but he's a football player. He's a tough guy. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but uh, yeah, I don't think his Damn. career is over. I would be contemplating it, but uh, no, no. Well, that's why Teddy gave it up. Yet. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater said to hell with this. I'm out. I mean, he, cause you know, he's a high school football coach and he was talking about, it, and he's just like, look, man, I, you know, the concussions were mounting. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about my kids and my family, and I'm more than just Teddy Bridgewater, the football player. I'm Teddy Bridgewater, the husband and dad. And, I mean, it, you know, at some point, I mean, we've literally seen Tua just walking and get hurt, man. I, I think, it, for me personally, I, I think his body is telling him, dude, you cannot do this anymore already. You know, some people, their bodies are meant to take it. Some people, their bodies are not meant to, man. And you and I both know that. I mean, you as a trainer, 
I know for a fact that you have come across some people with phenomenal potential, but their glasses or, you know, their jaws made out of glass, their, their, their legs, it's impossible to withstand the barrage that some people are going to put on the clinic that some guy's going to do on the ground. I mean, because, you know, for whatever reason, their bodies are not meant to deal with the physicality of the sport. And, and I know you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've had it. I, I definitely, definitely have seen that. And, you know, respectfully, I would never mention anyone. I will mention uh, what happened to me, oh my gosh, I want to say 18, 17 years ago. And I was at a at a local boxing show. And as I'm sitting in the crowd, a young fighter comes up to my coach at the time. They had known each other, young fighter. And before even getting introduced to the young man, I could hear, and I mean 16, 17, and I could hear his speech was slurred. Mm. And come to find out, he had 300 amateur boxing bouts and before the age of 18 mm. had already I guess I guess you can't you can still call it this punch drunk gosh I'm so desensitized or overly sensitive to what you can and can't say anymore but damn it punch drunk he was punch drunk a kid and uh, I have obviously never forgot that so mm. I've seen it at the professional level, you know, the brain gets sensitive. It's the, it's the way the brain or the body will protect itself. It will just shut down. You know, we're going to sit down. We're going to lay down. We're going to, we're going to relax. Just like a, a car accident. You hear about drunk people being relaxed enough to survive the accidents. Well, you know, that's what the brain does. And uh, as it continues to happen more often, even after the first time, it's, it appears that it happens easier and easier every time. Definitely a scary, scary thing. And uh, I hope to is okay, for sure. Well, we, we'll see what happens. Obviously, you know, they lost last night and they've got, I think a big part of why they lost last night was all the extra that's going on with Tyreek right now. I mean, you are potentially looking at a locker room divided. There's been, you know, I mean, in that situation, it's ongoing, right? It's not done yet. There's still an investigation happening right now with the Miami Police Department and those four individuals that were involved in that stop with Tyreek. And every single day, you know that Tyreek and some of the other players, they're going to be asked about it. It's not going away anytime soon. You as a trainer, if you've got that situation going on right now, how do you pull your guys aside and go, look, I know we've got this thing. I know there's a way that everybody's going to feel about it, but we have got to focus once we're on the field in the cage, in the ring, whatever it is, how are you getting them to press forward, especially as a team? I mean, obviously the the main difference with football is it's 11 on offense, 11 on defense, practice squad guys, everybody on the on the bench, uh, you know, it, it I I can't imagine being Mike McDaniel's right now trying to pull everybody together. Well, gosh, I I don't mean to seem insensitive but I would be insensitive to my fighters my team of fighters my players you know you're you're supposed to be professional or you want to be professional you know you need to behave professionally you need to be able to compartmentalize something that is as simple as what happens nobody got hurt 
Tyreek had some skin in the game as far as faults and accountability. Or actually, I don't know if he held himself accountable, but he did. Uh, obviously, the force was excessive, but I'm considering that minor. You know, we've got a job to do. If I see anybody in here getting overly sensitive about what happened or I see that it's affecting the team, I, I, I'm going to be very disappointed. So I might mention it, you know, I need my leaders to step up and uh, make sure we leave that crap off of these mats, out of this locker room. Tyreek, you okay? You, you want you want us to we want to have a sit down with everybody and and go around and ask everyone's feelings. You okay, Tyreek? I'm good, coach. I'm good, coach. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure. Let's get let's get you in a, to some therapy. You, you sure you don't need anything, coach? I'm good. Okay. Well, let's go win a football game. Yeah, pretty pretty simple. Uh, if it was a death or um, you know an accusation. An egregious accusation, some scandal. Okay, maybe it's time to address it, but, you know, Tyreek, your mouth got you into a little bit of trouble, which it's a, it's one of the most obvious problems that uh, young black men and, and, and women have when you get pulled over. You know what not to do. You know what to do. And Tyreek, you you know, you proved to all of us that even you are not safe. Even a celebrity is not safe. And so let's, let's as a team, let's just move on. You could everyone answer your questions in the media, but no, I don't think it really affected the team. I'd hope not, right? Hmm. I mean, look, I think that's the thing, right? is the media. I mean, because for me, they're going to be after it. And on a slow news day, you could bet money this is going to pop up. I mean, you, you talk about scandals. I mean, no Uncle Shea, I guess, you know? Yeah, I just... <laughs> not, and I know, no. yeah, I know you saw that. <laughs> of course. Gosh, damn. Of course. Shannon Sharp just... For the gusto, he, he can't tell me that wasn't what? planned. By the way, he, he he. I I knew I knew that would be your take on it. Come on, absolutely man. Absolutely not planned. No, absolutely I, not. No, this, and I haven't heard anyone talk about it like I'm going to talk about it about the, the, how it could have happened. But to go live on first, Instagram, there's too many steps, bro. There's no, way no, too no. many steps. All right, and, and then the the thing was is at first he was going, well, I got hacked. Then it, it changed to. Uh, he didn't say that. Yeah, he did. At, at first, he said he got no. hacked. Then, then he said that you don't he, watch an ICAP. You don't watch an ICAP, bro. Yes, I do. He, he. So then you would have heard him say. That's what I'm getting that, to. Then he changed it to he he was getting it in, and then his phone was blowing up, and he finally answered the phone, and they was like, "You're on live." And then last night, he said that no. Jordan. Ooh. Is is on his team or whatever, and he he cut the feed on the live. So he yeah. he's changed the story three different times already, bro. He's never changed his story. Yes, not he one has. Time. Yes, he has, so, bro. He personally has not changed his story. Yes, he period. has. No, he hasn't. I've watched him tell the story, Austin. Bro. <laughs> times, and the same story over and over and over and over. He has not changed his story one time. Not one time. Bro, yes, he has. No. He did not post, I got hacked. He didn't do that. His assistant did. And he told him to take that down. And he did. And he immediately addressed with the emergency nightcap, they called it. And he explained what happened. And and I'll explain to you, uh, Instagram, he said, these phones. He said 
that he flipped the phone down on the bed and he accidentally went live and then somebody yes. was calling him and telling him, hey, bro, you're live. Everybody's hearing everything you're doing right now. And then and then he changed it from that to, well, Jordan cut off the feed for me. So it went from he stopped the live to Jordan canceled the feed for him. Because he said that last he night during that roast that he thing. He stopped the live. He said he answered the phone when someone called him to say, we, we heard you. They didn't say, we can hear you right now. They said, we heard you. And the feed had already been stopped. And if you've ever, well. You don't seriously say, take the bait, do you, Austin? You believe that he accidentally went live when he was doing that? If if he oh, come if he on. if he did if he did uh, <laughs> set that up, he's the best. How long did it take before the t shirts were it, ready? And it's how long scary. did it, how long did it take before t shirts were ready, Austin? What was it? Three hours went by. That's that's the age we live in. But nah, you come have to on. be able to listen to you have to be able to listen to a man. And look a man in the eye, and be able to tell if he's lying or not. He's if you lose, if we lose that ability, man, it, you, you, I would feel butt naked. I can be, I can tell <laughs> after watching someone basically in in on video, basically as an effective as an interrogation as the roast of Shannon Sharp happened last night, and that that was a lot nightcap as well. Yeah, no, I saw Lavelle. I saw Kai. He's telling the truth. He ain't, man. Well, the, he's you, you, you have to know this man is telling the truth or this man is lying. And I'm looking at him, and if he's lying, he is scary. One of the best liars. No, no, the best liar of all time. And and I, I wouldn't, I would not even watch Shannon Sharp. Not one. Effing more time. Why was the video facing the door? Lying. Why was it facing the door, bro? It wasn't do, facing the door. Do, it was facing the bed. What, bro, look. It looked to me like a door. Okay? Jeez. Bro, look. Here's what I want you to do right now. Okay? Put me on speaker. Am I on speaker? No. Put me on speaker. Because we're going to go through okay. this. Okay? All right. So, I'm on speaker now. Okay, go to Instagram. Okay. Now, I've already done all this. Now, now click on the plus sign. Yep. Okay, now I do this all the time. scroll to the to the right and click on the live. Oh, yeah. Okay, how many steps is that? You have to okay. open up Instagram. You have to click on the plus. You have to scroll over and click on the live. That's four steps. You don't have to scroll over to click on the live. Four, four, what kind of phone do you got? You got an iPhone or you got a droid? Well, I think from this disagreement, we can tell what kind of phones we have. So you have an iPhone. I have an iPhone. Okay. You have a, a Samsung. No, I got a Pixel. All right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Google Pixel. You, if you don't have an iPhone, are you, are you really even in 2024? Look, okay, so I go. I'm, no, I I'm go not a 15 year old girl, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I open Instagram. Step one. I, I see the plus. I see the plus. Step two. A butt cheek. A butt cheek could hit the plus. <laughs> I see post. I, I post. I see post, story, real, live, camera, clip up, translate. Yes, boom. Live could be easily be hit. And all I have to do is hit this round button. To go live, that's it, uh, and it's live. All right, man. I just, no problem. I just hope everybody kept that same energy for Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce. Paul I, Pierce. I didn't hear anything about Paul Pierce. You didn't know why Damn. he got fired from ESPN? No. He was smoking weed and kicking it with strippers. He was on IG Live for about ten seconds, realized what was up, cut it out, and ESPN said bye. Oh. Well, he put himself on IG Live? 
Hey, what if it was by accident, man? He could have been clicking a series well, of buttons. Say? Hold on. What'd he say? Exactly. Go look at what he said. Or you don't know? I don't know. Look, the point of what I'm saying is I, I'm not buying it, okay? You, you don't – he's already doing a commercial for uh, for dick pills, man. Come on, bro. Come Listen, on. You You can't assume. Like, there's there's – no, everybody gets a mulligan, stories. right? Everybody gets no, a, mulligan. a mulligan. It is a it's mulligan. A mulligan. It's, it's it's cynicism. It's skepticism. It's a lack of yeah, uh, and that's okay to have that, Austin. No, no, no. <laughs> if you if you watch a debate, you watch the debate, and you watch a certain candidate. I watch two people who few, didn't want to answer questions. BS. Okay, but you you can hear that. I think he could be spinning something there, or she 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 seems to be avoiding the question. You see deceptive behavior, and you don't see that with Shannon Sharp. Oh you man! You don't see deceptive behavior. You see sincere. If you if bro, you that finesse know, is real. Him, <laughs> that finesse is hey, real. If you follow him, hey, I'm I'm a I'm a lie detector. I can be lied to, but I've <laughs> caught so many people. I've caught so many people trying to lie to me. You're lying to me, and oh, that doesn't sound right. And if it, I've watched enough Judge Judy that I know if it doesn't Judge make Judy really, sense, <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. The truth is easy. The truth is easy to say, and Shannon Sharp made that look easy. And so, if he's lying, I would be shocked. Okay, I, I'm I'm even questioning whether or not they were really actually even getting it in, bro. I'm telling you, I, I I'm just not. It, it it's all falling into place way too Why easily. Why is that? I haven't heard it. I, I'm not. I'm not going to listen to it. <clears throat> but why do you say that you think you, you you're skeptical of whether they were actually getting it in because this is it just seems like it's all perfectly planned and the the stance that he continuously tries to take is you know because you know, for a while there people were accusing him of, of enjoying men and so he's he's trying to tell people this was not a ploy to get me to find out you know that i i like women that's not what's going on here me i do watch nightcap and he's constantly bragging about his prowess he, and if he did get it in with her, he did it on purpose on IG Live because I think he his ego got the better of him, and he felt like I, I you know, I'm talking about it all the time. Now I got to prove it to people. Which brother? Wait, so you he didn't, needs you didn't cardio. Watch last night. You didn't. You didn't watch. You were watching the fourth quarter of the snooze fest after that game was already in hand, and I, I was watching. Bro, he wrote, literally said Shannon the words Sharp. on Nightcap, the emergency one. I've sat right there and watched the damn thing where he said that he, he, he said literally that yeah, I didn't do this didn't happen because I'm trying to prove that I like women. He literally brought that up, which I don't know why men are no, constantly. He did. Oh, my gosh, bro. Austin, you're you're about to get disqualified. <laughs> yes, he did. No, he literally no. brought it. Him and no. Lavelle were talking about no, it. No, he didn't. Oh, man. No, he didn't. Oh, my gosh, bro. Go back and rewatch. Go back and rewatch. Everything he has said is in dispute. Go back and rewatch. He doesn't need to prove that he, he doesn't need to prove that he doesn't like men. He doesn't need to prove that. I know that, but I'm saying he brought it up, bro. I'm not saying that he did it for that. I'm just saying yeah, these are things yeah, that he has brought up. up. Thank you. So he's okay. So don't, stop telling me I'm capping then, because I'm not. I'm no, not fronting. No, you're capping. You're you're paraphrasing off of the clip that you watched. No, there's no clip, I bro. I sat right there. Me and homie P were talking about it as we're watching it. I didn't go to bed till four o'clock in the morning because that stupid ass episode last night. What are you talking about? <laughs> not, no, not last night. The night before. Did you see how the days are blending in? Because I'm up looking up at what Uncle Shay is doing? <laughs> like hey. I'm supposed to give a damn about some other man's nutsack and what he's doing with it. You know what I'm saying? Did you, did, did you, what, what were his other defenses? 
But why would he do it? What did he say? He said why that he would- threw the bed or threw the phone on the bed, and one th- and you know a bunch of things happened by accident, and he and he ended up. Because he's like, if you notice the first part of the video, it was a white sheet. And I'm like, wait a minute. What you, n- nobody posted that part, bro. So how would you know? You see what I'm saying? He's already caught himself no. up. No. Oh, no. my gosh. And he he defended himself, and he was attacked by uh, Lavelle. Straight up said, I'm glad you followed my advice. Yeah. And Jay said, "What advice?" He said, "I told you to make a sex tape." Yeah. And he's like, and 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 he defended that. He also defended himself against Snoop, uh, Lavelle, uh, that YouTube kid. He said, "Why would I risk a hundred to two hundred million dollars just to dispel a rumor? It makes complete sense. It also makes complete sense that." This has happened before. To who? And, uh, Kim Kardashian. We we knew we that, knew that her video uh, was not uh, on accident, bro. And even uh, then, no, of course not. And then, of course and, and not. Even it's, then, oh boy's already said that that was actually her mom's idea to do that whole damn thing. She's agreed to it. So we we know that Kim Kardashian's mom put that tape out. They did it on purpose. Yes. To to build an empire, and it worked. It did. So, and, and how terrible, terrible, terrible is that? Is it possible? Yes. Has it happened? Yes. Have other people tried to do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't but believe we're arguing about this. <laughs> you you have to. I, well, I think what now we're arguing about is common sense. Uh, you trying to tell me looking, I got common sense? And looking at a man in the hold, eyes. Hold up, going, broham. Hold up, broham. I'm just saying. I'm you try to tell me I ain't got common sense. It, 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 dude, it, he has a common sense defense, uh, and he has he, he he doesn't have any history of that. He, you know, <clears throat> he doesn't even really defend too often about people saying that he's gay. Bro, he's that, constantly that, bragging, talking about his baby arm and dating strippers. And come on, like stop it. He this I don't never heard him say anything about dating a stripper. Go, well, then but, you're the one not watching Night Captain, apparently <laughs> pimping. Well, he, he, I don't think he's a, ever said I date strippers. Yes, he has. What the? You f- just sounded like Sh- that was your best impression of Shannon Sharp right there. The you hell? sounded like. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Gosh, damn, man! What the? You, yeah. you just had some Alabama slang and went to a new office. <laughs> Man, you, you. First of all, he's from what? He's from uh, Mississippi. All right, so let's get that out of the way. Secondly, I'm going to encourage you to, Atlanta. to to go and look up all. No, he he's legitimately from Mississippi. He was pissed about that alleged thing with Brett Favre. That's why he was so mad because he grew up. He grew up poor, poor. Like right. real poverty, amigo. Like poor, poor. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, uh, yeah. he. That's why he was so pissed at Brett Favre for that whole alleged thing. That that got under his skin. He he wasn't playing around with that. You, yeah, you didn't see that? No, I haven't. No, but I did. I did look Shannon Sharp in the eyes and <laughs> listen intent. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> And there has there has been no evidence, none, only speculation that that he would do that on purpose. Look, but, we, and we got ton- MMA to talk about Austin. We're we're already thirty minutes in. <laughs> we got MMA to talk. Well, it is a hot topic. It, it, is, no, hot it, topic. it is, man. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Free, free, <laughs> free uh, night clap, night clap. Uh, uh, Michelle, what was what was what was the other one? Look, take this or oh, whatever. There's yeah. nothing to free. He didn't even get in trouble with anybody. Instagram didn't ban him. Facebook ain't do nothing about nope. it because they're both Meta. ESPN didn't take any nope. action. So what? What do you mean, free Uncle nope. Shay? <laughs> he said he's because he didn't do it. He's fine. He <laughs> free, him from, free him from the persecution <laughs> of Drew Duncan. <laughs> 
Come on, man. <laughs> didn't do it. I don't think he that dude gives one red, one red damn about my opinion, <laughs> to be honest. Um, he was getting hot, though, with the comment section. People, tell, people saying that he did it on purpose. And by the way, he made the comment section where only people who were paid subscribers could comment. So th- there are people out there that are thinking like me, bro. It- it's just too many coincidences. But we we we've got MMA to talk about. The Sphere, uh, UFC. It's supposed to be, as you said, the the premier event of the year. Uh, more than just O'Malley is going to be on that fight card. Brian Ortega, Diego Lopez. Uh, I really think that could actually end up being a hell of a fight. You know, and you and I have already talked about this. On paper, it doesn't look like the world's best fight card. But if you're a fan who's a casual and you're going to check this out, what should you expect from Ortega and Lopez? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Lopez is a young prospect, fan favorite, uh, can do it all. And... City is Brian Ortega, and he he's 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 an OG, highly skilled. This this will be newcomer uh, versus OG, but it, it will be contested at the highest level of the sport, and anything can happen in this fight. Definitely, do not miss that one. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough. I, I would give a prediction that if it goes to the ground, I've got Brian Ortega by submission. Mm-hmm. And, and and I'm guessing late second round or, or into the third round. And I, I think it will be contested on, on the feet, on the ground, against the cage. Just a it's not going to be we're going to stand here and bang it out. So if that's what a what a fan would want to see, I think they'll be disappointed in that. But highly skilled contest for sure. Well, and then in addition, there is going to be a women's championship. Alexa Grasso, Valentina Shevchenko. Look, this is one of the things that you've heard me talk about when you and I call fights together is the opportunity, right? This is it. If th- somebody's got to make a name for themselves, it's potentially this fight. We're still talking about potentially $20 million just at the gate. That's not even including the pay-per-view buys, right? So right now, not only a title shot, but a shot to really impress. But is that what you want your fighter to think about? Is the potential positive after effects of a fight of this magnitude at, in this moment? You know, it's always stay in the moment, be present, and just win tonight and everything will take care of itself. But you you can't look past your opponent. You can't, even, you know, you've got these college kids, they're taught how to talk to the media, when to talk to the media. You know, it's, it's, it's a system. And so if I'm if I'm talking to my fighter, I'm we're, we're not talking about after you beat Shevchenko. We're we're not talking about that. We're gonna we're gonna stay right here, right now, be present, not only to maximize the opportunity, as you say, but to make a memory. You know, because when you start looking too far into the future, you miss what's happening right in front of you. And you look back on it and you, you you kind of don't remember it. So that's that's another thing I tell my fighters, I tell my kids, I tell myself, you know, you need to be present right here. As you're walking to the cage, that's all you're doing. You know, you're not thinking about the fight, thinking about what are, may or may not happen, and you're just making the walk. You're making a memory. You step in that cage, it's still not time to get nervous. The cage door closes, still not time to get nervous. They're announcing your name. You need to hear that. You need to feel that. You need to feel the crowd 
it's time. You need to be feeling all that. <laughs> and then when it's time to get nervous, when that referee says, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on. You know, uh-oh. And then now you're in each other's face and the fight has begun. So you got to be nervous for about 2.2 seconds. Now it's time to fight. So, no, don't look past the fight. Don't look for a title shot. You you know this is a title eliminator. This is a number one contender. This is Shevchenko. You, you, better, you better worry about Shevchenko tonight. Don't be worried about a title shot tomorrow because that's when you should worry about it is tomorrow. And I don't mean literally tomorrow, Saturday, UFC, Noche, Riyadh season. I don't mean tomorrow. I mean the day after the fight. Obviously, the main event, Sean O'Malley, Mir Abdashali. Look, before we get into that, I know you saw the quotes that I had sent to you. Uh, Henry said once he loses, of course, he was talking about Sean O'Malley to Mirab because I do believe he's going to lose to Mirab. F it. The next fight, that's what's up, me and Sean. Mm, 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 mm. You know, some fighters have this unbeatable, this mystique, you know, that they are, they are unbeatable. And, and while that mystique is there, it's true. It's true. It affects, it affects the opponent. It affects the pedestal they put these fighters on. But once it's, over once they get knocked off that pedestal everyone gets that that vibe like hey i i can win this i can beat this guy and uh i think with sugar sean i'm sorry um henry cejudo that 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 mystique is over he's he's beatable he can be taken down he can be outstruck yeah i'm not i'm not I'm not interested in what Henry Cejudo is doing against the champ right now. I don't. I don't want to look past Devashvili, you know. But there is a chance for O'Malley to lose. Definitely, definitely. But the odds are, Marab is going to come forward relentlessly. He's going to bank on his boneheaded. My cardio is better than yours. I wrestle. I do it all. I'm a monster. I'm a cardio machine. And Sean O'Malley will eventually, and possibly early, catch a read and catch a body. So Henry Cejudo trying to insert himself, it seems to be his style. You know, he's trying to stay relevant. But, uh, yeah, that fell on my deaf ears. (laughs) <laughs> well, and it's kind of funny to me because it's like, okay, so you you would want to fight who you think is going to be the loser of that fight? Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not a flex, bro. <laughs> I'll take the loser. Take yeah, the loser. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, Come on. Man. Yeah, who the hell? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know about you, bro, but I woke up and I thought to myself, you know, I'd really like to fight the loser of that fight. Hey, bro. You want to get it in? <laughs> I'm going to show you what's up. Personal. Yeah. Like, nah. I'd, I'd be like, look, man, all right, fine. If he beats Mara, bro, see me. Nah, I said he's like, he's going to lose, and then I'm going to take him down and give him two in a row. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't, you know, whatever, man. Speaking of, you already know how I feel about this fight. I'm not changing my prediction. Uh, I'm going to be a G about it. I still think O'Malley wins this fight. I know you see it differently. Tell us why. Well, I I see, and and, and I've been watching quite a bit of the buildup. And so, if I had odds before, these were the same odds that I gave Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain is going to get. O'Malley to the ground, and he's gonna he's gonna make it a a classic Aljo fight. It's gonna be boring. <clears throat> he's gonna retain the title by wrestle effing Sean O'Malley. 
Mm. That that didn't work out. That didn't work out now. Now, same thing here. He's going to have to defend the takedown, and O'Malley can do it. But he's going to have to defend a relentless attack to get the fight to the ground every minute for five rounds if he doesn't knock Marab out. So the, the longer the fight goes on, it favors Marab. Can Marab get clipped and completely shut off? I really think he can. And I really think that he's foolish enough because he's, he's, he's depending on his pace and his aggression and the violence and, you know, and probably he's going to be emotional as well. Whereas Sean O'Malley is not. So I'm going with MMA odds, right? I'm going with the style versus the style. And so if I had to bet, if I had to bet, like I had to risk money, I'm going to go with Marab. But don't we all want to see Sugar Sean win? And I I know that your pick is Sean O'Malley to win by KO. I didn't say I think he'd win by KO, but I I think he'll win. I I think, and, and again, for me, my weakness with him is he gets a little showboaty. There have been plenty of fights where he could have put somebody away and he didn't. And, and you and I both know that about Sean O'Malley. And I've I've said that one day it's going to catch up to him in the worst way. This is a fight to me that if he starts taking control, forget the flying fist and the yada, 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 and showing out for the fans and your, your rainbow colored hair, it's all cute and everything. You, at some point, you've got to get down to business and you've got to put somebody away. I, I can appreciate the showmanship. But I, I would actually love to see Sean O'Malley follow through with a real knockout. It's great he could go the distance, but I, I just that's but that's me though. Okay, I think he's only gone the distance one time. What I'm saying is he has that possibility. A lot of times, we're, we're, especially with this guy, he loses if he goes the distance. Right, exactly. I don't, I don't see him winning the decision. No, yeah. no way he's winning a decision. No, it, it's not happening because the. What his other weakness is, he's not really that great on the ground. So, I, I well, he's not great on the ground, but what he can do is get back up. And that's word. He can, he that's can, word. But I and he's got to keep him up right though. Get up over and over and over. Oh my gosh, you're right. He's gonna. He's he will. He's never been as tired as he is gonna be in this fight oh, if yeah. it goes to decision. Oh yeah. And 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 a, and a long five round fight. With Marab, it looks – it's not a, a five rounds of uh, chess on the feet. That's not how we make it to five rounds. It, it's going to be a grinding up and down and maybe with some extended periods of time with O'Malley on his back. Certainly plenty of time with O'Malley's back on the cage if we're grinding towards a decision. I don't think – that Marab could stand with O'Malley the whole time. I think he gets knocked out for sure, or or some type of technical knockout or referee stoppage for sure. He loses the striking battle in a kickboxing match, hundred percent, ten out of ten times. And for However, the record, he's had five decisions. How many? Five. But when, when was the, I know the last decision was uh, Cheeto, right? I think so, yeah. A guy that's never been finished. The guy that's never been finished. He finished Alja. Uh, and he's had many spectacular knockouts, which I'm like, how is this thin man well, knocking was, people cold? It was a split <sighs> decision with with him and Peter Yan. That was a couple of fights ago. So, I mean, well, that was a, that was an eliminator. There's two right there, and, and again, and then there was the Peter fight Yon with Andre. Is, is a striker too. In fact, he had back to back fights 
One with uh, Terry on Ware, that one, that was the decision. He won that unanimously, won a unanimous decision with Andre Sukameth. And that was the uh, the Cyborg pay-per-view. That was UFC 222. So he's had <laughs> he's had five decisions. So again, I say we know that UFC. he Goodness. we know that he could go the distance. It, again, my point, like I've said, he's got to put Marab away early. Second round. If he doesn't have him out by the second round, it's a problem. The further that fight goes, the more it favors Mirab. We agree on that for yeah, sure. Absolutely. And, and I think he could get put away as well because uh, fatigue is undefeated. And, you know, Mirab is, is playing with fatigue chips, right? Like he's counting on overwhelming you and drowning you. And if you at one time go, I don't want to be in here. Well, I think Marab will find a way to get you out of there. And I don't think it would be uh, supremely violent or where we see O'Malley unconscious, but I, I could see the referee stepping in there and pulling Marab off top of him. I agree. I mean, it, it, I'm not saying it can't happen. My pick is still O'Malley, but it is what it is. Real quick here. Let's get it in, my man. You won three last week. I won three this week. Obviously, we've already talked about O'Malley and Mirab. You like Mirab. I like Mally. Uh, Bama, Wisconsin. Who do you like in that one, my man? You know, it, it's easy. It's easy to pick the obvious. Oh, my goodness. You know what? <clears throat> well, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, again, South Dakota, Wisconsin only put up 28 points. And and really that game was a bit closer than the final score looked. In fact, they, they've only outscored their opponents 52-27. to 27. To put that in perspective, Bama did struggle with South Florida last weekend, but they scored 28 points in the fourth quarter alone. Oh, man. I'm going to see my buddy today. His name Bama. He's from <laughs> Alabama. His favorite team is Alabama. He talks. You as soon as you hear him talk, you know this boy from Alabama. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go against Bama. Really? And I'm gonna. I'm gonna pick Wisconsin with the grind. I think they're gonna, they're gonna run the ball like the days of Yorn. And uh, I think I think they'll grind out uh, a low scoring win over Alabama. What say you? Uh, well, I, I like Bama in this game. Look, they they gave up 82 yards and what was it four and a half, or six and a half a carry to to South Dakota. Conversely, Jim Miller for Alabama ran for 9.3 over South Florida. So I I don't think it's going to be any better for them defensively against the run. So I like Bama, even though I don't think Jalen Milrow is really that good of a quarterback, and and they don't have Isaiah and and they don't have Isaiah Bond anymore. So they're relying on the run game. And Wisconsin, go back and watch that game, man. You want to talk about arm tackle after arm tackle after arm tackle, lazy tackling, bro. I mean, it was like watching a really bad. Sports movie out there. Seriously, if <laughs> if South Dakota had had a quarterback, they they probably would have won that game running away. And I'm not even kidding. Wisconsin got up early, fourteen nothing, but after that, they they were lethargic, man. And, and even in the week before yeah, against Western great. Michigan, they weren't that great. So well, they're going to get up for Bama. They're going to sure up these arm tackles. Uh, I'm sure they did this week. Uh, I, and they're gonna you know, every, every, if Bama gets everybody else, everyone's best shot. So that's true. But I that offensive line and and Van Dyke, he couldn't read at the line of scrimmage at all. Man, he he never knew when a blitz was coming. Uh, Boston College and Mizzou. Boston College is now ranked in the top twenty-five. Mizzou comes in as a top fifteen football team has been since before the season started, pretty much. Um, who do you like in this one? Well, you know, I'm 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 the MMA 
guy. So I'm going to go ahead and sometimes vote, especially with the football, with my heart and my emotions. And since I'm a Jayhawk, my son is a Kansas Jayhawk. <laughs> He's going BC. It's, it, it's muck. Fizzu, gotta stay, <laughs> stay, stay safe. But yeah, man, man. No, yeah. I hope Mizzou gets drum sixty-two to nothing. <laughs> well, I I got bad news for you. It's That's not my it, pick. It's not gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> Boston College is a victim of success that they haven't really earned. the The win over Florida State, as you and I talked about right now, it doesn't literally mean anything um, i i think yeah. this is going to be a really really bad wake-up call we just saw what happened with tennessee and north carolina state last weekend and by the way you and i you know how much i hate the preseason top 25 polls officially now nine teams who were either preseason or ranked after the initial polls came out aren't even ranked or at least have one loss five of them aren't even ranked and florida state doesn't even have a win yet so in and, and north Notre Dame got beat by Northern Illinois, who's now ranked because of the win over Notre Dame, but Notre Dame's not even ranked anymore. Make this make sense, man. Uh, <laughs> you did make it make sense, and I'm with you. No preseason rankings. We'll wait till week eight. Man, I'm telling you. What are we doing? I'm for, you, made it, you made it make sense. Uh, Denver and Pittsburgh, NFL, it looks like Pittsburgh is is going to be starting Justin Fields again. Denver, Bo Nix looked horrendous last weekend. <laughs> Three turnovers in his debut against the Seattle Seahawks, which, by the way, Seattle ran for, I think, 140 yards in that game as well on the ground. Denver's defense doesn't look to be any better. Uh, who do you like in that one? Well, this one I'll go with my analytical brain and my emotional heart, my bleeding heart. And as a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I'm never picking the Dadgum Broncos. <laughs> and uh, but also they don't have a chance in this uh, matchup anyway. I like Justin Fields and Mike Tomlin to. To get it done unspectacularly, but to get it done none, nonetheless and convincingly. So, donkeys lose. You talking about my team like that, man? Uh, uh, you heard what I said now. <laughs> well, I hope Patrick Mahomes has to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and he stubs his toe. Um, <laughs> I, I like I like Pittsburgh to win too. Denver. It, it's not that I'm really impressed by Pittsburgh. I mean, look. For a, quote, backup quarterback situation, because I'm really skeptical of it, Justin Fields did what you want a backup quarterback to do last weekend. He managed the game. He didn't make any crucial mistakes. The defense kept him alive. They didn't score any offensive touchdowns, and they still ended up winning the football game. They they forced turnovers. You know, now don't get me wrong. Justin Fields missed some throws, but their strength is the run game. And Najee Harris and Justin Fields, I, I think, are going to put up 200 yards on Denver. And, and I'm not even kidding. They they couldn't stop a D2 run game right now in Denver. It is, it is a bad situation. What I think is actually going to be a hell of a game is Tampa Bay and Detroit. You know, a lot of people out there, given the situation with Deshaun Watson and all that, are really saying that Cleveland screwed up. Uh, people believe that there's a resurgence right now with Baker Mayfield in Tampa. Detroit lost in the NFC Championship game last year in a game that they were in complete control of. Their own head coach has said, you know, the one is closing. He doesn't know when they'll be back. In the meantime, uh, I, I think this is a game that people look to early in the season and go, okay, this is a defining game. Who do you like? <sighs> no one has the Bucks winning the Super Bowl. And some people have Detroit winning the Super Bowl. However, 
I'm going to go with my heart. And I'm still salty about losing to Detroit week <laughs> one last year. <clears throat> I'm going with Baker the Playmaker. No. Did you just call him Baker the Playmaker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm going with I'm going with Baker uh, to because he can get hot now and he can have a big game and uh, uh, you know I think they're the underdogs and I you know I don't want to just go with the the odds but yeah I'm 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 picking. Baker and the Bucks. You know, this one is a really tough one for me. Yeah, and of course I said that last weekend with, with Texas and Michigan, which by the way, I I had a feeling that Texas was gonna blow them out when I woke up that morning. I just thought, damn it, it's too late. Um mm. you know what? I right now I, I'm gonna say Detroit just because I, I think their defense is slightly better than Tampa Bay's, to be honest with you. And I, I think what Baker is doing in Tampa Bay is a little overblown, if I'm keeping it a buck. I, the South is so weak right now. We've already seen what Atlanta's going to have to offer. Nothing. Carolina is dead in the water. Okay, you know, New Orleans had the blowout, but again, who they beat. So I, it's between New Orleans and Tampa Bay to me for best of the worst. So... I I like to, I like Detroit in that game. Um, last one here, Houston, Chicago. Chicago was another team that did not have an offensive touchdown last week, and Caleb Williams didn't even throw for a hundred yards in that football game. Uh, C.J. Stroud, Houston, they had a difficult time with Indianapolis, but to be fair, there were moments when Anthony Richardson looked very improved as a quarterback. C.J. Stroud, you've got you give him Stephon Diggs. I, I think there's still some timing that that's need to be worked out there, and, and I don't know if the play calling works with Stephon Diggs. We'll see, I guess, here in a few weeks as the season progresses. But in the meantime, who do you like, Houston or Chicago? And again, Chicago came back from seventeen nothing, no offensive touchdowns, and beat Tennessee last weekend. Well, Tennessee, what are they? We'll say, ask the bed. Yeah. And, <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, gosh, it kind of, kind of like a, a two and the Dolphins last night. But I really am intrigued by this game because it's it's CJ Stroud's no rookie, but he had a great run last season. He's a young <clears throat> uh, he's a young quarterback. And obviously, Caleb has he, – he's got a lot of people to prove wrong, but he's got a lot of people to prove right. And he did not play well like we thought – he didn't play like we thought he would, or let me, let me rephrase that, like I thought he would. I know your opinion about Caleb Williams. And uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a take that never leaves my brain as we uh, – as this unfolds, because if you're right, I can't wait to tell you <laughs> or to tell anybody that'll listen. My boy Drew called this a long time ago. So can Caleb Williams uh, get it together in week two after basically a flop debut? I don't think so. I think CJ Stroud and the Texans roll. I think they do get it together in week two. And uh, yeah, I've got I, I, I got Houston, and I'm going to say under under forty points. Really, under forty. Yeah, yeah honestly, under forty total. If if I were to ever do the over under, which I don't, um, I, I actually wouldn't be mad at that because I was just going to say that it, it could be a low scoring game. You know, the but sure. I, I think yeah. the strength that is not talked about enough with Houston. And I understand that C.J. Stroud is a huge star, but Joe Mixon had 160 yards last weekend. I, if if he gets half of that against Chicago, I think that'll be enough balance for, for Houston to be able to ultimately put a drive together late if they have to, where they can run down the clock, 
You know, I think they need to start working the the underneath field a little bit more. I love the deep shots. I love stretching the defense, taking some risk. But everything takes balance. And you've got to keep the defense honest. And, and eventually, when you're just doing one thing when it comes to a pass play, the defenses are going to see it. So I, I, I think if they put that together, they're going to be okay. But you know, the other thing is, too, is they also gave up four sacks. So versus... Oh, Brock Purdy, who had all year to throw back there. Uh, real quick here, before we get out of here, I want to tell you two stories, Austin, two stories. One day, your boy was out, and kids, if you're listening, I am not condoning anybody smoking ganja. This is just something that I did when I was younger. Uh, when I was about 18 or 19 years old, I had gone home to go see the fam for a little bit. And a boy, I was high off of the chronic on me. Ha, ha, ha. Seeing quasars and sh- you understand? And uh, my eyes were supremely red, man. And I walked in and the old man looks at me and he goes, hey, son, you been smoking? I said, nope. And he goes, oh, yeah, why are your eyes so red? And I was just like, man, I'm really tired, you know. And he goes, well, why that kind of glossing glazed over? I was like, man, you know, I haven't taken my contacts out for a few days and I'm tired, like I said. You know, my eyes are just really dry. And he goes, son. Look at me. Do I have stupid written on my forehead? Yep. All right. Now, my father was able to spot a liar because he was so good at lying. And because my pop was so good at lying that I learned how to spot a liar. But I'm going to tell you story number two before before we, we get back into this. When you I, smelled like weed. You look like you're high. You walk like a duck. Yeah. Okay. So I actually I'd, I'd put on some cologne, but I was in college. Oh, even even worse. Yeah, I know, right? Busted. Busted. I, I, I was in college, and um, I was watching some select videos, some adult films the night before a big test, and uh, the, my computer had died, and I thought, oh well, it's fine, whatever, dude. And so I I plugged it in, and when I plugged it in to let it charge overnight, I figured when I went to go open my computer in the morning. It would be fine. Wrong. I open up the damn laptop and everybody in class hears, <gasps> and I'm like, oh, I have no idea how that happened. And I go running out of there and slapping the computer. And I'm like, what the hell? And the damn thing won't even turn on. I'm not saying that nothing is impossible and that Uncle Shay didn't potentially accidentally go live. I'm just saying that one day my dad looked at me and said, son, do I have stupid written on my forehead? Now, he's either the world's best finesser or it really is an accident. But either way, it's working out for him. And I think the only thing that bothers me is the amount of people justifying it for the clout because he's so popular. Well, he's popular. He's an icon. Well, Okay, so we're just going to excuse all behavior now as a result. Now, like I said, Mulligan, everybody gets one. And I don't care, to be honest with you. I don't care that he's out here beating the brakes off a cookie. But we all know that there's, and, and this is why I say, you you should be have to be 18 to be on social media. That's just my, you know, like Twitter, I, because Twitter allows this stuff. I, I think you should have to verify your age on Twitter. Why they don't make you is beyond me. But. Well, I've got a 13-year-old daughter, so you know what I pick, definitely. Right. But as soon as she turns 18, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Wait, <laughs> there's grandchildren. Yeah. That yeah, man, and I'm I'm a grandpa, so, and I'm, I'm, I'm 40. <laughs> 40-year-old grandpa. You ever oh, heard of dude, one of those yeah. before? Yeah, yeah. Really? Because <laughs> I was, yeah. technically I was 39 you, you when it pappy. happened. When you're a pappy young, you're going to be a grandpappy young. Man, that ain't Such a lot. life. Yeah, I was. But you'll get to you'll get to move around with them. Well, not, be... well, depending. So my oldest, she's married and her husband's in the military. And he actually just got stationed out of state. Initially, they were supposed to go to Japan. And thankfully, right before they sent everything off, they they called him and said, hey, whatever you do, 
don't send everything to Japan. Um, we're, we're, we're sending you somewhere else. So, but yeah, he's my grandson. He's, he's out of state now. So they're, they're gone. They don't know how long for, but, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, but, military life. Yeah. You know? the military, military, <clears throat> hurry up and wait. They, they tell you you're going and you're not going. So, man, <laughs> oh, who do you who do you pick to tell the truth? Yeah, Military yeah. or Shannon Sharp? <laughs> I, That's I, an easy decision. Yeah. I'll pick for you. You pick Shannon yeah, Sharp. Yeah, no, I'd I'd pick Shannon Sharp even <laughs> <laughs> all day, man. I ain't trying to add that. You know what I mean? Uh, Austin, it has been a pleasure today, my man. Thank you so much. I think this might have been my most fun. Uh, fun time being a guest so i love it maybe the next time will be the most fun but this time this one this one's number one for me and look out for my picks i'm looking to be over 500 on the winning side after next week well you you were over you i mean we we were both three and two last weekend yeah 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 Yeah, the the frisco game i thought was going to end up upending me when 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 C Mac got hurt, but it didn't matter because oh boy ran for 140 yards. So you know. All right, everybody. I am Drew Duncan. The show is Underground Sports, and we are live. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan Radio. Wherever you're listening to the podcast, take advice to play Underground Sports by Drew Duncan. YouTube podcasts, I've or Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Deezer. Wherever you're listening, I am there. I heart iTunes. I am everywhere. Not difficult to find. You can download the HHN TV app, a.k.a. the Hip Hop Network. I am on there as well. And, of course, WPFR Black 50 Radio. Black50radio.com is live 24-7, 365. And I am on there live Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Guys, your local programming is next. Don't you dare touch that dial.